What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's a beautiful Florida day here. It's like a nice 74 degrees right now, sun's out, and it's perfect cruising weather. However, I have no cars to drive. So there's a little something with every car, per usual, but quick rundown. The 3000 here is sitting waiting for parts. I could not get my front oil line to seal up on the turbo, the feed line. So it's down in there. You can kind of see the shiny new banjo bolt right here. I replaced the crush washers with new copper washers uh, with the old banjo bolt. It would not seal. I put a new banjo bolt with another set of new crush wa or copper washers in. It still won't seal. So I've given up and I've decided to just do an AN line conversion uh, for the front feed line. So basically it's an adapter there, an adapter on the oil pump housing and uh, or oil filter housing, and it's a dash three AN line in between. So I'm just waiting on parts to show up for that. That should be a relatively easy fix. I just got to pull the AC bracket off to put the adapter on to the oil filter housing and this thing should be back on the road. Now, the red V, I'll get into in a second. The black V that I haven't touched in literally months has needed a clutch. So I ordered a new LS7, just OEM clutch for it. Um, and I'm just waiting on that to get here. And then I have to just like kind of muster up the uh, motivation to get that thing back up in the air, pull the trans out, do the clutch and whatnot. So the red V, I was actually just here tinkering with these creative steel rebuildable race motor mounts. I ran these for like two months in the black V. They're very aggressive, very stiff, a lot of vibrations with the cam and all that. So I ended up pulling them out. I put the UMI mounts in the black V, which are, uh, they're also polyurethane, but it's a little softer, more of a street mount. And I took these race mounts from creative steel out. Now I ended up when I was taking it out and taking this bolt off, I twisted this piece. So I had to disassemble them. These are nice because they're actually rebuildable. You can buy new polyurethane blocks from Creative Steel. And you basically just take out these Allen bolts here and then the whole thing breaks down and then you take out that guy right there and then that's what holds the stack together to this piece. So I basically had to loosen that big Allen bolt re-clock this to be the proper orientation and then tighten it back down so we're all good to go there with the motor mounts engine bay wise i put a new power steering pressure line in the old one was leaking so it just goes from here and for some reason goes all the way down to here and over up to the pump i don't know why they didn't just do some kind of line that like comes up and like just straight to the pump but hey whatever uh so we got a new gates pressure line in there engine bay is pretty much you know ready for a motor and then we have the motor here so the other day my headers came in so we went with some long tubes for this one not the shorties like in the black car i feel like the black cars depending on where these sit on the frame rail how low they hang i feel like the black car is going to end up getting these at some point because those shorty headers are nice for ground clearance but i will be raising the black car a little bit and they just make everything difficult like i don't know how i'm going to change spark this spark plug on the black v without pulling the whole entire header so i got the long tubes ebay long tubes um everyone seems to like them they seem to fit well and they come with adapters that will bolt up to the exhaust that came with frank the mega flow exhaust and uh yeah kind of just got them all mocked up and hung on the engine in the last video you saw i put the summit racing 25 percent underdrive harmonic damper on and i just got this engine lift plate in today that way i don't have to try and put this thing back in with a seat belt strap like i did when i pulled it out so engine lift plate is on and today my oil pan baffle that has been a long 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 back ordered from improved racing is out for delivery so we're going to going to be installing that today as soon as it gets here so i'm going to end up spinning taking the headers off uh spinning the engine around and pulling the oil pan off i'll clean it all out which i think i already did but i'll clean it all out again and then i'll uh, pull the stock baffle out and then prep it to put in the improved racing oil pan baffle. I also got started on the bushing kit, the suspension bushings that I mentioned in the last video from RevShift. So I started on the right corner. I have the front upper control arm, 
bushings installed. That was relatively easy. And then I have these lowers that are uh, giving me a little bit of a headache when it comes to installing them. So I gotta finesse these things in uh, to the lower uh, the subframe so that I can get them installed. I need to order myself some new end links here because these things were cooked. There wasn't much left of them. And uh, I think I might do some inner tie rods as well. I mean, these don't have any play or anything, but you know, I'm here, so why not? Then I also did the trailing arm one in the rear knuckle on this side, cause I had the rear knuckle off because I was working on dual caliber bracket stuff. So this one was the easiest. There's no metal sleeve in the rear knuckle. So I just had to get the rubber bushing out and uh, slide the rev shift one in. And this whole back area is just hanging out. We have uh, BMR trailing arms, real nice red with spherical joints uh, on the inside. And then, because like that's all bushing. This is all bushing play pretty much. And then we have uh, the rev shift subframe bushings as well. And I think I also have rear upper lower control arms, or uh, upper lower, rear upper control arms, but I can't do those until the uh, rear subframe comes out. So once we pull the rear subframe out, I'll be able to do these, I'll be able to do the trailing arms, and I'll be able to do these bushings, but that won't be for a little bit. All right guys, so we got the engine flipped over and uh, kind of supported by the engine hoist here just because it's a lot heavier with the heads on when you spin this thing upside down and you have to take the bottom bolts for the engine standoff. So here's what it looks like without the oil pan on. You can see the timing chain that we did, the new oil pump that we did, uh, the pickup tube brace that we added on there. And this is the factory windage tray. So the windage tray helps prevent oil from uh, getting tossed around by the crank and it ultimately will cause the oil to like foam up. Uh, that happens if you overfill it or if you have some sloshing issues. So I cleaned off the surface here. I'll just hit it with some uh, brake clean on, the, on a rag and make sure that's clean before we go to reseal. And remember when we go to put this on, this time we're gonna put a little bit of RTV right here at this joint where the front cover uh, kind of seals. That way we get a good seal there. So you're supposed to, when you do a front cover, you're supposed to do a dab uh, at the corners of the oil pan. Back here, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're not gonna do it just yet. We're gonna wait until we uh, do the rear main seal because we're gonna be removing this rear cover. So when the motors flip back over, we'll just put the dab on the pan itself and then put the cover back on. Now we have the pan here. Now the stock baffle is kind of just like, it. It just, it's a tray here that prevents the uh, oil from slashing, I guess, but not really. Uh, but the you'll see when I get the uh, improved racing one that it has trap doors and like an area that keeps oil around the pickup tube. So I already pulled the bolts out around the top here, lift that off. This is what our pan looks like. And now you can see this is literally just a flat tray. So. This is what the bottom of our pan looks like. This is what 237,000 miles in the bottom of a pan looks like. We got a little bit of sludge, not too bad, but uh, what we're gonna do is clean this out with brake clean, get it all tidied up and uh, we'll go from there. Actually not too bad. I mean, the previous owner, from what I could tell when I took that engine apart, the previous owner maintained it well with oil changes and whatnot. And seeing that the pan is relatively clean and you know just has a little bit of sludge, but like again, 237,000 miles, it's not too bad. So we'll get this all cleaned up and get it ready for when FedEx shows up with the baffle. All right guys, so I jumped into it. I opened it up. We got the CTSV oil pan baffle from Improved Racing. Got these little spacer guys in here. We got the baffle right here with the trap doors. And then, uh, what else we got? A sticker, and I guess a little jet tag for like a battery switch, it looks like. That's kind of cool. I'll actually, I'll probably end up using that on whatever battery switch I put on the car. That's neat. So, put this aside for now. And we have this guy. So let me get the oil pan over here and we'll get this thing installed. Now, the first thing in the instructions is to pull out your oil level sensor 
from the side of the pan, because I, if, I, if I'm correct in saying, I think it gets in the way. So we'll pull this guy out, put it to the side, and Improved has these little spacers for the stock hardware. And what happens is the spacers all go around all of the bolt holes. So go around here like so, maybe not on here. I think it's just on these guys, but check the, uh, check the manual here. Yeah, it looks like on every bolt hole, except for uh, these two top ones, uh, the spacers go on. So you're supposed to apply grease to these guys so that they kind of stand still on there when you're installing. So I'll get some assembly lube, that's nice and tacky, and we'll get these things all greased up and uh, start throwing them in. So I put on my bolts here. You reuse the same hardware. So we'll just get a little assembly lube on here. We'll just go around all of them. So you'll see with the improved racing baffle, the one we pulled out, it was literally just this flat plate here. With the improved racing baffle, we have all these walls and little trap doors. And what that does is it prevents oil starvation and sloshing when you're going from side to side and whatnot. Uh, and you have like lateral G forces. I think this is good for like up to 1.4 lateral Gs. So I'm gonna take this outside, spray it down, brake clean real quick, just to get any kind of contaminants off. And uh, we'll get this laid down into the oil pan. Once they're all tightened up, you can get that oil pressure or oil level sensor screwed back in. And we're good to go. We have the improved oil pan baffle installed to our CTSV LS6 oil pan. All right, guys, so I got the engine rotated back over. We got the oil pan fully installed. And I also went ahead now that I have a sealed pan on and I primed the new oil pump. So basically to prime the oil pump, what you do is you pop this little plug out right here within, uh, with an Allen bit and you just shove a hose in there, fill it up with oil till oil starts coming out. I put some new thread sealer on this plug and threw it back in and your oil pump is all primed. So other than that, the engine is looking pretty good. Next step is going to be hopefully putting a clutch and a flywheel on the back of this thing, pulling it off the engine stand, doing the rear main at the same time, but doing a, getting a clutch, a flywheel on here. And at that point it's time to put it back where it belongs. I'm gonna wrap up the video here, guys. I think the next video will probably be uh, the, the subframe bushings and whatnot in that whole process. I just want to get one side done just so I can struggle off camera and then uh, make a video for you guys on the driver's side. So I'm also gonna today paint I was showing you guys this engine mount earlier in the video. I'm gonna paint these brackets up, make them look nice. And uh, also just try and get this engine bay to be like 100% ready so that when a clutch situation is figured out for this thing, all we gotta do is throw it together. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Um, you know, those of you guys that plan on drifting your CTSVs or road racing them, I would recommend an oil pan baffle you know, a lot of guys, uh, because it's a rear sump, they don't run them, but you can still run into oil starvation issues at higher G forces and things like that. So check them out. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment below and I'll see you guys.